Hello everyone, I hope you're very well and oh my god, welcome to the uh, fifth or sixth episode of the Woman in Band series. I have a little assistant today. Hey! <laughs> He's adorable. Um, so this was supposed to be a one long episode about loneliness, judgment and tips on uh, how to start your van journey but I asked you on Instagram if you preferred a one long episode or a two-part episode of like 30 minutes and you basically said 99% two shorter ones so I've cut it in two and in this episode we're going to talk about uh, loneliness and how you can meet new people on the road and also how you can keep in touch with your family and friends while you're away enjoy this second last episode and I'll see you very soon there's so many places I can visit I can go now I'm living in a rolling home one thing that really surprised me when I moved into the van was how alone I felt in it, uh, particularly at night. And I really am a person who enjoys their own company, but I was really, really surprised by how isolated I felt at times. Um, that's been something that I've got used to and that I... I think I enjoy now um, but it's certainly worth pointing out to people who are thinking about living in a van uh, it definitely can feel lonely at times um, and I live very close to, <laughs> to my friends as well so I see friends at least a couple of times a week I don't really have any issues around meeting people because all of my friends tend to live close enough for me to visit um, but still at times I can feel really isolated. I was quite surprised by that um, because nothing else has really changed about my life apart from moving into a van so I shall uh, kind of be exploring that a little bit more. Um, I'm... I would say I feel alone but not lonely if that makes sense so I am incredibly fortunate to have Loki I think without him I would be very lonely and very alone um, but he is my constant companion he is re the reason for going for walks and exploring new places and you know getting out in nature and all that and you know, I sit and talk to him like he's a person, which might be crazy, but, you know, he's my... He's kind of my world. And, you know, sometimes you long for maybe a more intimate human contact. I don't mean sex. I mean, you know, just that that connection with somebody that you, you start missing. You know, especially if you've left your friends behind, like, a long way away. It's not like I can drive via some country and, and, and visit them or, or go back home and see them. You know, they're a long way away. And I don't make friends easily as it is because I'm quite an introvert. Um, and so the few that I have, I find every now and then that I am missing them. I'm actually a way more confident, more extroverted person than before the trip. Yeah, it's it's really strange how living by myself for 18 months, almost in total seclusion, apart from maybe once a fortnight or once a week uh, visiting a friend or, or visiting someone off Instagram or something, how that has made me more outgoing and more confident than when I left. Yes, I do. I do get lonely, absolutely. Um, and I think there's a whole thing about loneliness as some people don't want to admit it so they're very much like oh I never get alone I'm absolutely fine I'm fine um, and I think I used to be like that I used to be like, oh, I'll never be lonely I'm happy all the time um, but the truth is I do get lonely incredibly lonely at times um, but then loneliness is a really natural part of the human condition and loneliness is a feeling just like all the others and it's a message is telling you something so whenever I have felt lonely I either find people 
to be friends with and that's usually a campsite I do find campsites are brilliant for that um, or I'll contact people back at home like my brother or my friends and reach out to them and have a really good chat um, I do get homesick a lot uh, and I think that's tied up with loneliness but I yeah so for me and my connections to my old friends and family are really really important um, and then also I do think it helps a lot having a dog like he is wonderful therapy and I think to be honest I don't get lonely all the time and I think that's a large part because I've always got my best friend in the car with me and that is Doogie um, so when I do get bouts of loneliness they don't last long because it's like I'll spend time with Doogie we'll go for a walk um, I'll make connections with people on the road um, I think it's also really really helped that I've got a project like I've got a purpose I've got um, something to really get my teeth into uh, which is the researching men's mental health so I'm always actually connected not just to people with that but I'm connected to something more <laughs> I don't know I don't know if that's the most best way to say it but that's how it feels it's like I'm I'm doing something more than this <laughs> so um, yeah yeah, I think I think that's re re it helps a lot. I've written an article on how to be alone, and it's one of the most popular blog posts I've ever had on my website, and it's still getting views even now. And I posted it, I think, back in March or February, a long time ago. Um, so I think loneliness is a real a real thing for people. That like how do you cope with it? I don't really feel alone while I'm living in my van um, since. Uh, Monday through Thursday I'm pretty much alone but I like being alone as well and then on the weekends I work so I get to meet my colleagues who also are my friends because they're really cool um, yeah so I don't really feel alone in the beginning of my solo travels I was inviting many friends to join me uh, because I wanted to share the experience with them and because it was fun to be together um, but then I had in northern Norway three weeks just by myself and I literally didn't talk to anyone except of like three times hi and goodbye in the supermarket to the lady and the cash machine um, and that was one of the most beautiful experiences I ever had I didn't feel lonely at all it was the moment of my trip where everything changed and I changed and no I would not say that I felt lonely I, it felt super super great I didn't even have the need to talk to people like before that I was always calling someone I was calling my mom my friends whoever was available um, but in these three weeks it, this disappeared and I started to I learned that I am enough and that was one of the most important things that I could have taught myself probably um, and then afterwards it like it was also very lonely it was late in the year so there were not many tourists anymore in Norway <laughs> not many locals either um, so and later when I drove to Spain and Portugal there were always people so whenever you didn't want to be alone you could just go to a place where there are many camper vans parked and you would immediately have some new friends that was really cool no <laughs> I don't feel alone I'm uh, I actually look for alone time because I much rather <laughs> be alone um, but you know, sometimes you need company, uh, and sometimes when you uh, when you don't talk to anybody for a very long time, you start to feel a little bit weird talking to yourself or to your dog, and so <laughs> sometimes you do need to talk to somebody. And I think in this day and age, it's very difficult to feel alone. Mm, you are always in a way connected to other people when you have your phone and you have reception you are not alone you have everybody 
you can call, you can chat, you can uh, FaceTime, you know, I don't think this loneliness is not a problem for me. I've never felt alone. Uh, every now and then my girlfriend's, uh, my girlfriend comes and joins me for a couple of days so it, it breaks uh, a little bit of this um, yeah loneliness I don't really get um, lonely I don't do loneliness that I think there's two different levels of loneliness I think there's a, a, a loneliness inside when you've got unresolved issues that it doesn't matter how many people you're with you, you still feel that it's not I wouldn't even call it loneliness, but it is. I think it's a, a hole that's not filled. Um, and, and I think you end up doing things to distract yourself from it. Um, and that's one, one of the big lessons I've learned on the road, that I've got lots of unresolved issues that I'm learning to um, process and, and learn from and move on from and, you know, reducing that hole a little bit. Loneliness in the traditional sense of being around people and being connected to people, I don't get that at all because if I want to be connected, then I reach out to people and there's always somebody to reach out to. Yeah, so loneliness, I know that a lot of people in vans um, feel very lonely. It's not something that I've ever felt. Nature, being out in nature is very fulfilling to me. I don't feel, I can be in the middle of nowhere, no humans for miles and feel completely um, comforted and at home and supported and, and, and whole actually I feel quite whole out in nature it's, it's like I'm home so no I don't really feel lonely but on the odd occasion when I want to have a laugh or or connect particularly with females then I just reach out on the internet so loneliness is, is not really a problem for me coffee shops and cheap station meals living my life on the road. I'd really like to meet more people who are living in a van in my area, which is the southwest of England. Uh, like I said, I've got lots of friends, which is absolutely fantastic, and my family is close by. But I'm really curious to meet people who have the same lifestyle. Um, and I haven't really found the answers yet about how to do that. Perhaps connecting through social media, I don't know. So that is something that I'm kind of looking at and exploring at the moment. One thing that I've learned on this trip is that if an opportunity comes up just go for it I mean you know obviously listen to your gut and be safe and blah 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 but you know if somebody's like hey yeah cool do you want to come and meet me or hey you can come stay at my place well I mean you know okay so there's some people on Instagram whatever who you know I, their accounts are obviously genuine they're just like dog accounts they're not some you know murder accounts <laughs> Um, and you know, I like, I remember one especially and, and I was like, Hey, you know, is anybody got any tips on how I can get to Amsterdam? I want to go there, but I don't want to take Loki. Duh, duh, duh. Anyway, I ended up meeting up with her. Um, P in the Collie is her Instagram. Um, and super lovely lady and let me stay downstairs at their house for a couple of days and we had dinner together and it was really lovely. And you know, I, I just really learned that, you know, it's so worth just going with it you know just jumping in and going yeah all right let's see you know and if it's a crappy walk and you don't get along well who cares in the end you know at least you tried um but maybe you like go somewhere cool or you meet some cool people who become your like lifelong friends uh you know you're getting shrouded um you know so <laughs> definitely if an opportunity comes up you know or somebody invites you somewhere that you meet along the road uh, I met these two, this couple traveling in their van. They're German. I met them in Sweden. They ended up coming to watch a day at World Championships. Low key. Um, you know, which was just so cool. And because they were kind of the same. It's like, yeah, right, just go for it. You know, it's such really cool. Do you know, it's going to sound so daft, but genuinely, how I've met some of the nicest people on the road is because I've waved. <laughs> like when I come into a park up and I spot someone, I'm always like, like the cheesiest wave ever <laughs> like you're like really happy to see them and I'm well I genuinely am usually because I'm like a person hi be my friend um <laughs> but I think it just completely breaks the ice um 
And I've had people do it to me and it instantly makes me feel welcome. They give me a really big hearty wave. And it's just such a simple gesture, but I really, really feel that it's opened doors to meeting new people for me. Uh, <laughs> Um, I also think Doogie's a fantastic icebreaker, having a dog. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, cute dog. His name's a bit of a talking point as well, because Doogie, they're always like, what? I'm like, Doogie, like, Dougie, but... Mm. And I think I've said it a few times, at campsites. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm living on a campsite right now, and the sense of community that's on there, and also the coming and going, so there's always interesting people to meet. I found that they've been a really great source of friendship when I've needed it. Um, yeah, and I, I, I don't know if this is true, but sometimes I get the feeling that um, fan life, hashtag fan life, um, can be a bit anti-campsites or anti-establishment, which I understand completely because it's an alternative way of living, so why do we want establishment? But actually nine times out of ten, the campsites I've stayed at have been like small, locally owned. Uh, of course you've got the chains, but they're really expensive, so I go to like the local ones. Um, and so partly you're contributing to the local economy, so the locals are going to love you rather than hate you, because um, there's definitely a, um, an anti-fan vibe going on at in Portugal at the moment. So if you're being seen to be contributing to the economy, you would hope that there's gonna be more tolerance in wild camping, for example, if you combine the both. Um, and also, like, don't get me wrong, I, I love being at an amazing free park up that has views that better than any five-star hotel you can never pay for. But um, yeah, so campsites for me have been a really good source. I've rambled a bit, but <laughs> sorry, I just, yeah, I campsites, don't be afraid to go to them because you think you need to be free all the time or you need to have this amazing park up. Sometimes you just need to go for free Wi-Fi, electricity and a shower. And they're the best things in the world at that time. Once in Spain, I did want to go out and do something fun though. And I do prefer to have company when I go out in cities. Um, so I went on this site called Couchsurfing and they have a bunch of hangouts that all the users create and you go on there and you just look through the list for something that you would like to do and you join them and you can create hangouts yourself as well if there's something you want to do and invite others um, so I went there and I actually met a bunch of really cool people and they invited me to a housewarming party, so I made some friends. I travel and work, and a lot of times I meet people at work. I work with a lot of nice people. Sometimes where I find a nice packing spot, there is other people packing there, and we start talking. People in other events is very talkable, it's really nice. <laughs> Uh, there are so many, so many ways to meet new people when you're traveling in your van, even though it's very different from backpacking or other ways of traveling, um, because you are in your own bubble. So, and if you don't want to meet people, you can just avoid it. Um, but if you want to meet people, you have to get out and you will have to do the steps. Um, for example, as I already said, you can just go to places where there's many camper vans and just go and talk to the people. Um, especially if you travel in within the high season, you can check the, the camping apps and you will find people like you. Like yourself, who are on the road, who are parked in this spot and who found this spot via this app. And like, there's, it's super easy to get in contact with other camper van people. Um, what I did in cities, because sometimes I wanted to meet other people and not talk about my van conversion, um, I used Couchsurfing Hangouts. This is actually a super cool uh, app and a super cool way to meet other travelers and also locals, because also locals go and join, um, or I, may, I went for walking tours and met other travelers. So this is my most favorite or yeah, the most, the ways that I use the most to meet other people. 
I don't. <laughs> uh, I don't meet new people. Uh, I don't need new people <laughs> uh, in my life at the moment. I have plenty of people. And but if I ever come across somebody who looks interesting, who looks like looks like I has, uh, it ha he has a cool story, he has a cool rig, and we are parked uh, um, next to each other. Of course, I would just start up the conversation, uh, but it just happened once <laughs> in two months. Uh, and I started chatting with this guy, he had a dog. You know when you have a dog, it's very easy to start a conversation. Uh, dogs are very good icebreakers. <laughs> and a dog like mine, even more because he's so cute and everybody seemed to like him and seemed to want to pet him. So sometimes I have to hide him, not talking to anybody. So. So one of the things that I've always said um, since I've been in the van is as much as I um, I came out on this journey to find out what other people do in the world and, and have new experiences, I do get very drained by people. So I've spent a lot of my time avoiding people. Um, but you do happen to meet in one place or another, you do meet characters on the road and I've met quite a few characters and um, it's been it's been interesting you learn quite a lot from new people you know what what what, what other people get up to in their lives you, you know you look at someone and you might think they're just you know quite a simple person and, and they can turn out to be i've been through some quite crazy experiences and i was always quite surprised at how people open up to you as a stranger for some reason people really open up to you um, so you probably hear more about people's lifestyles as a stranger than you do as as an initial friend. Um, the only problem I had with that though was that, you know, after we parted company, I, I would find myself a month down the line if they told me about something that was going on in their life that they were worried about. I would be wondering about them, wondering how they were getting on and if they were okay. And so that's something that that I've um, had to really come to terms with that. I'm going to be meeting people who I feel quite connected to and then they're going to go away and maybe, maybe if we're destined to meet again we might but I do find myself wondering about them quite a lot but I kind of like that because then that's less draining. Um, I think I think it's a nice thing to do to, to just meet people on the road as you go along. I've also obviously through my YouTube channel and through Facebook um, met quite a few van, dr van dwellers who, who have been really, really lovely. And, and I would never have met those just living in a house in, in, in one town. I just, it just wouldn't have happened for me. You could come along, you can make it better if you give me a call. I'm, in general, like, the worst person at being connected with people in general. Unless I see you every day, you probably won't hear from me very much at all. Talk to my mom every now and then. Uh, give her a call every now and then. Um... But yeah, I, I don't really do that. And you know, I like I've made I've made new friends along the way. Uh, I have a friend in England, a friend in Sweden, who I actually message a lot. We talk about dogs, you know, dog friends. Um, so for me, it's not kind of a big deal that I'm not so connected with these people because um, I wasn't anyway. So it's just I'm just a horrible person, I guess. <laughs> I mean, that's a great question and that's something I've struggled with. The past, I would say, two months, I've felt incredibly homesick. Um, I mean, it's wonderful that we're in the 21st century, so I FaceTime my brother all the time. I'll like, chat to friends on WhatsApp. Uh, I think Instagram's a great way of keeping connected as well. Like, I'll, put, I'll update my stories quite regularly so they can see what I'm doing. But nothing beats that one-to-one -one chat. But at the same time, like I'm disconnected from their daily life and they're disconnected from my daily life and um, there's a gap there and yeah I get I do get really really homesick um, so I'm still figuring out how to deal with that if I'm honest <laughs> um, I talk to them all the time but uh, it's not the same as being there with them uh, so yeah 
Um, if you know, if you get really good advice, tell me. <laughs> I think also for me, as a personal thing, I think maybe six months is my limit. I've traveled, I mean, since my twenties, um, and it's always been for like chunks at a time. And six months has always been my maximum. This has been the longest. This has been eight months. And I think it was about the six month mark that I started to feel really homesick and I pushed it. And I think going forward, I will travel for six months, come home, travel for six months. I think, I think that's the only way to keep this life sustainable for me because otherwise I'm just gonna be a homesick wreck the whole time. <laughs> uh, but you know, I think that's part of the learning process when you're on the road is that you've got to find out what works for you. And if part of that is is taking the time to be at home for a little bit, then that's what you gotta do. So yeah. I've always been moving a lot, so for me it's not new to be away from friends and family. And um, I try to go visit them once in a while. And I text a lot with people I miss, and phone calls, maybe video calls sometimes. It helps. I am talking to my family and friends via my phone means I am talking to my mom once or twice a week. Um, we are always chatting um, via WhatsApp. My friends call from time to time or I call them. Um, it is hard to not always be close and not always be able to join whatever. Right now my like my girls met, they went to a little city trip. Uh, they went to a little city trip all together, and from here the flight was just way too expensive to go back to Europe just for these three days. Um, so I couldn't join, and it was super sad. But I called them via video call, and it was nice to see their faces, even if it was just on the phone. Um, the same for my mom. Um, we also had a funeral right now and everyone is super sad and I would like to hug everyone and but that's not possible. So that's shit. Let's be honest, that's the shit part about fan life. Um, but the good thing is that whenever we are back we do have some time to visit everyone, to see everyone and Whenever we are driving through Germany, I'm trying to stop over at all my friends' places to see them, to visit them, and yeah, to, to like spend some quality time together. I have been living away from my family and friends since 18 years, so this hasn't changed for me. And I do, I do keep connected to them, uh, just as I did when I was living in a home. Uh, we have, uh, you know, I don't know, weekly Skype session with my parents and I always uh, chat uh, with WhatsApp with my brothers, uh, with my brother and his family. So as I said, it's not very difficult to stay connected to the people you love, so... I think, I think when you live a busy lifestyle that I was living before, I don't, I don't spend any less time with my, apart from one friend, I don't spend any less time with my friends now than I did then. The kids, I've got three boys and they've never really been one for keeping in contact and neither have I, um, as I discovered. So no, nothing's really changed there. Um, and because I'm a YouTuber, they get to know what I'm up to anyway. So I don't think they, they don't know what I'm up to because of my social media coverage. We'll go wherever you like.